Hey everyone, this is part two of the spool holder project. Since I broke the cutting wheel on this saw in part one, the first thing that needed to be done is put a new cutting wheel on. Then I cut another slice off the two and a half inch mild steel round stock. In part one of this project, I made the taper pictured on the right side of the drawing. In this part, I'll be making the one on the left with the shoulder. The idea is that when I'm done, it will look very similar to the one I already made, with matching characteristics such as taper angle, bore size, and overall outside diameter. This will probably be the most significant piece of material I've turned on this lathe so far. So let's do it! If you notice the facing cuts aren't totally smooth, it's because I'm just going for a decent reference since most of the material will end up removed for the taper in the shoulder. Also, if you notice I'm wearing a glove, I realize that you should never wear one around a spinning tool, but the hot chips kept burning my hand. I did a quick check to make sure I brought the piece to the proper length, and also did a quick visual check to make sure the face was at least relatively square to the rest of the material. Next up is to bore out the 5 8 inch hole through the middle with a series of drill bits of increasing size. Again, this deburring tool is really nice and I'll link it in the description. Now it's time for cutting the shoulder. Because of the size of the material relative to the size of this lathe, it was a pretty tedious process of light cuts and popping the fuse to get it down to size.
With the shoulder cut, I needed to mark the position for the set screw hole to be drilled. As per the drawing, it's a perpendicular through hole through one side of the shoulder and will also need to be tapped with a quarter inch by 20 TPI thread to accept a set screw of the same size. It probably wasn't necessary, but I mounted the part in the chuck and used one of the jaws as a reference for the mark. At this point in the project, the shoulder is cut in the part, the 5 8 inch hole is bored through the middle, and the location for the set screw hole is marked. Once the set screw hole is drilled and tapped, the only thing left to do is add the taper and this part will be finished. So with that said, let's drill the set screw hole. I must have been drilling against the grain for this set screw hole because it was a lot more work than I feel like it should have been. I eventually got it drilled and tapped and it just needs a little cleaning up. I figured the easy way to clean the rough edges from the inside was to put it back in the lathe and run the drill bit back through. Then I flipped it over and used a bit of sandpaper to smooth the outside of the hole as well as finish the rest of this side of the part. Now that the center is bored out, everything is smooth, the shoulder is cut, and the set screw hole is finished, the only thing left to do is cut the taper to match the other side. But since cutting the taper was a tedious operation that I already showed in part 1, I decided to just use movie magic to cut the taper in this second part. Oh great, that's not what I wanted at all. And that's why if you have a taper hammer, you should just use it. Cool. It looks like the movie magic eventually worked pretty well as these tapers are nearly identical in their angle, minor diameter, and height. With both sides of the spool holder finished, there's only one thing left to do. I found this hex head screw of the right thread, but the top of it is too wide to be able to thread it in correctly, so it's a good thing this video is based around a mini lathe, otherwise this would be a harder problem to solve. I found this coupling nut with the same thread that seems like it would be perfect to hold the set screw in the lathe. However, since I wanted to have room for the tool to cut the diameter of the head smaller than the diameter of the coupling nut, I used a longer screw of the same thread and screwed it into the other side of the nut so I can tighten the two against each other. The quick operation to the set screw was a success and now it fits perfectly with some room to spare. And that's it. 
not just for this video, but this spool holder project. I'm really pleased at how this second part turned out, how well I was able to match the drawings that someone else made, and how close in final dimensions the two parts ended up to each other. Just to give an idea of how I think these are supposed to work, the side without the shoulder will be welded onto a piece of 5 8 inch bar stock, and the other side with the shoulder will be free to be adjusted to the width of the spool. For example, how they fit and hold this roll of paper tape. Again, I'm really impressed with how these came out and how consistently the right hammer with Movie Magic can add tapers to parts. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, comment if you saw something noteworthy, please subscribe if you aren't already, and as always, thanks so much for watching. Wow!